Hello everyone and welcome back to Gregtech New Horizons. Our goal today is to unlock High Voltage. And to get to Tier 3, there's a few things we have to do here. Actually, quite a lot of things we have to do here. First of all, unlock Stainless Steel. We need the HV circuits. And I would also like to upgrade our Blast Furnace heat coils. This is quite ambitious for one episode, but you know what? I think we can actually do it. And we're going to make use of our new infrastructure here that we built last episode. We crafted a bunch of MV machinery. We set up the semi-automation of polyethylene. And we also built the MV miner to allow us to automate resources while we're here at the base. It was previously on a cryolite vein in the twilight forest. I've since moved it here on a magnetite vein. Magnetite is going to be very useful for us today as it gives us gold and iron. I've also been busy around the base just trying to clean up some of the, the chests that we were using to craft with. I started to centrifuge a whole bunch of redstone here, which is going to become important. This is going to give us ruby dust. And so I think it's a good idea for us to start on the things which take the longest, and that would probably be the canthal. So one of three things we need for Canthal is Chrome. And Chrome is not the easiest thing to come by. So we're gonna add some extra processes over here at Ore Processing, if you can even call it that. It's a little mini Ore Processing, don't worry, this will be changed later in the game. And we're out of steel plates, how can that possibly be? <laughs> we'll make like three stacks. And we can even use our new MV bending machine. Look how fast this thing is, it's glorious. I was also making up some item filters which should be done in the assembly machine, perfect. These fillers are not only used for crafting, we can also use them in-world to uh, basically filter different pipes. So yeah, what we are going to make here is a sifting machine, which should be a quest. And we're also going to make two ore washers. Yeah, hopefully we have the materials, we're missing some electric motors. You're always one material short, it doesn't matter <laughs> what it is. And yeah, we're just making these machines at LV, there's not really a benefit to doing them at MV or HV. Other than the speed, of course, but speed is not really a factor at this stage in the game. We can live with things being slow. And plus, it's cheaper to power this way. And cheaper to craft. Okay, there's the two ore washing plants. You know, I say that speed isn't really an issue, but that's really the reason I built two of these ore washers. So the ore washing plants does exactly what it says in the tin here. It, cr it washes crushed ore with water. Either water or distilled water. Distilled water is faster, but that takes energy to produce. We need to set up a distillery. Although maybe it is actually worth doing that. Hmm. I'm not sure, we'll see what kind of speeds we're rocking with this, and we'll we'll adjust accordingly. Although, speaking of adjustments, I don't think this is actually going to work like this, because we need to have a source of water in these, of course. We're taking from the source, same source of water as the simple washer. We just have a basic water tank above us. So I switched some things around here. The railcraft tank might have to be upgraded up there, but I believe everything should work in this configuration. It's all powered via steam turbines. Once again, we just extended the steam along. This is the water pipe right here. So yeah, you might remember a couple of episodes back, I mentioned about ruby ore. Ruby ore is something I've been purposely saving for this process. We don't have too much of it. I might have to go mine in here in a second. A stack in 42. I think that's all we have though. And this will act as our second resource, along with the centrifuging of redstone. This also gives us ruby dust, which is what we're after here. So yeah, first of all, we, we do have to pulverize, which is what the steam grinder here is for. We don't want it to go through the forge hammer and the simple washer. So the steam grinder on the right here just outputs its contents to this chest. That's going to give us crushed ruby ore. And the crushed ruby is going to go inside these two input chests. We have some conveyor modules to pull it into the machine. Oh yeah, that's slow. 25 seconds. I'm glad I built two of these machines. Yeah, 25 seconds per crushed ore, but this is going to give us an 11.11% chance at chrome dust. So yeah, if we follow along the ore here, we macerate first or, or put it through the steam grinder. We actually don't get the chance output on this. Chance outputs on maceration only apply at HV or above, even though it's listed here in NEI. It's only after we get this universal macerator and above. And we definitely don't get any extra byproducts out of the steam grinder, only the crushed ore. But yeah, once we get the crushed, we then ore wash. That gives us also purified ruby, and the purified goes through the sifting machine. So everything outputs to this middle chest, and then we have another conveyor module to pull into the sifter. It should only pull in the things that can be sifted. I'm pretty sure anyway. Let's actually just test that theory out. We might have to switch this around. And whenever we sift this, we get a chance at various uh, different types of ruby. The exquisite is the most valuable and also most rare, but lowest drop chance. But we can also pulverize these other gems into regular ruby dust. 
it just gives us different amounts. So for example, the flawless gives us, I think, a two dust, but the chipped ruby only gives us a small pile. It's still nice to have either, oh, it looks like it does pull in chrome. Hmm, we only wanted to pull purified in there. How are we gonna solve that? And you know what, speaking of the item filter, this is actually where it can help us here. We can make something called the ultra low voltage type filter and place that in between the ore washing plant outputs and the sifting machine inputs. And this thing will only accept crushed purified, which is what we need to go through the sifter. Everything else will be left in the chest below. We just ended up moving the sifting machine up a block and put the output chest on the right hand side to accommodate. Once that was fixed and the ruby was processing, I began working on the next things we need for canthal. To mix canthal, it is an MV recipe, which means we need an MV mixing machine. One more MV machine to add to our collection. With the mixing machine built and some time to kill for resources to process, I figured that the miner would be finished on magnetite. I also started to pulverize some clay for clay dust. It's used in electrolysis for alumina to get aluminium. And we headed out to meet the miner at the magnetite vein. It was indeed finished and we had a glorious amount of iron and gold to our name. We took that all back to our base and set it through ore processing. And since we've got some time to wait on canthal, we have to collect some more things for stainless steel. So we're here in the nether looking for a very special resource which I'm not actually sure if we've discovered yet. It seems to me that we've not discovered it yet. We're looking for something called spessartine. Spessartine is one of the ways we can get manganese and manganese is used to mix stainless steel. So actually it's vital that we find this ore. I really thought we did find it by now, but I guess not. And we're gonna have to come up with a solution to find it because I'm not really up for uh, traveling around the nether like we did before. And you know, a couple of you guys reminded me in the comments that if we're willing to invest some circuits, and I think we actually are, we have 20 MV circuits to work with, so yeah, we should be able to manage this. We can invest in a portable prospecting tool, which will automatically discover ores around us. Actually, it doesn't look too bad. I assume the different uh, plate materials determine the durability. Oh yeah, 144,000 durability. Elven element, okay, we're not getting that anytime soon. <laughs> we have to pick an appropriate material, I, I suspect. After looking through a couple of our options, I think actually vanadium steel is gonna be our best bet at this point in the game. Alright, so after quite a bit of crafting, we did manage to get our scanner here. I've actually no idea how this works. What on earth? <laughs> okay, so I think the range is 3x3. Three three. There is a 40% chance of a successful scan, and I'm assuming it takes durability off of us each time. Hello, creeper. Let's just try this out here. Is it shift right click? Right click the air? It says right click on rock. Does that mean it doesn't work in the nether? Oh, there we go. Aha, so we got three silver veins and an iron vein and it took off 75 durability. Actually, that's not bad. That's much better than I expected it to be. A few chunks over, we got some redstone veins and tetrahedrite. One thing is for sure though, and this is certainly much easier than manually doing it. Aha, eventually we did manage to find it here. Look at this, we got our man manganese vein, which contains spizartine. It's right over a huge lava pool, but that's not really an issue for us since we have the miner. This thing does actually work through lava. Let's give it plenty of diesel and the mining pipe. Make sure we record where this is in our little book. Nether manganese. Let's chunk load and I think we can just leave this to do its thing. And yeah, even with the scanner, it still took a good 20 minutes or so to find this thing. But yeah, look at all the ore veins we've now discovered. Definitely that scanner was a very good investment. <laughs> oh, what a shot that was. <laughs> I don't know if you guys saw that. Alright, slowly, one by one, we are addressing some problems here, but still, there is some obstacles in our way. On a slightly more positive note though, I did keep the blast furnace going after we processed the cryolite that we got from the miner. Our new ore washers and sifters have now finished processing ruby. All of this can then be electrolyzed at MV to give us aluminium, chrome and oxygen. So I macerated all of the useless ruby into dust. And then inside the brand new mixer, we got one stack of iron dust, one stack of chrome dust, and one stack of aluminium dust, and this gives us the canthal that we need. Only there's one very slight issue I kind of overlooked here. So right now we have three stacks of canthal dust. Ideally we go for four, actually. I think we should be able to get four. It should be another 16 chrome. Yeah, the recipe in the mixer here gives us three at a time. So that should make up the fourth stack of canthal. 
Our problem is that we need it in ingot form, not in dust form. And to do that, we need to use our blast furnace, oxygen, which we have plenty of, canthal dust, circuit 11, cooper nickel coils, but this is an HV recipe. And that presents a pretty big challenge for us, actually, because the blast furnace right now is only running at MV. Right now, we have LV energy hatches. These things accept 2 amps of LV each, and therefore 4 amps of LV equals 1 amp of MV. So logically, to get up to HV, we need 4 amps of MV. And that means crafting up the MV energy hatch. So the first material we need in a very long list for the energy hatch is going to be some coils. Magnetic steel rods and fine aluminium wire gives us medium voltage coils. And actually, it might not be a bad idea to craft four of these energy hatches. I would quite like to double up the blast furnaces and have two of them in the near future. So we might as well make more energy hatches while we're crafting them. I noticed that we actually still have an LV distillery spare. The second component we need for the hatches is going to be some lubricant. And we don't really need our LV extruder anymore. I think we can get rid of this. We can replace this space with an LV distillery and start to distill some of this creosote oil that we've been saving out of the coke ovens. Circuit number 24 gives us eight buckets of lubricant and we need two cells per hatch. Yeah, that's going to be quite slow. <laughs> Wait a second, was my math just completely off with this? I think it might have been, we're 16 short. Oops. Not to worry, we still have the chrome available here but I think I might have to go mining because we also need this for stainless, as we know. Okay, we got the coils here. I was making up some bronze rotors. We are gonna need four MV pumps. Please tell me we have everything. That's three. That's four, awesome. We need some more extra aluminium plates, which we can use to craft machine casings and turn those into machine hulls. We'll make s as many as we can, six, I guess. Okay, so now we're waiting on the lubricant. We also need ultra low power ICs. And surprise, surprise, this is another huge rabbit hole. <laughs> oh boy, okay, there's a whole quest line for this. Uh, are, are we ready? I'm not actually sure, to be honest, where this is going to lead us, but let's just follow the quest book here. Okay, so first of all, it seems we need a material called silicon tetrachloride. And it seems to me there's a few different ways we can get it, either from trichlorosilane or mixing chlorine and raw silicon dust. Uh, I think the chlorine and silicon dust is the best way, actually. Wait, hold on, Tri trichlorosilane is hydrochloric in silicon? But this gives us some of the hydrogen back. Wait, hold on, let me check the numbers on this. This is actually the first time I've seen this thing uh, since it got changed. Okay, I checked some of the recipes. It seems the simplest way is just to do the one stage process, but we also need some sodium, which we get from clay electrolysis. This is part of the reason why I wanted to smash down some more of the hardened clay. We need some silicon, which we actually get from centrifuge and redstone. Everything is starting to come together right now. Yeah, raw silicon. In the older versions, it used to be that you could just use this dust here. We get the chlorine from electrolyzing rock salt. So we've actually built up a decent amount in these tanks right here. Yeah, so it's four buckets of chlorine and one raw silicon. Circuit number two. And this gives us silicon tetrachloride. This should also be our quest. So now with this, we need to make silicon solar grade dust. And this is where it seems the sodium comes in. Hold on, let's just go through all of this. I want to make I want to make as much as we possibly can at this point. We have quite a lot of chlorine to work with, and we're actually... Wait, did we use all the rock salt already? Uh, maybe we don't have as much chlorine as I thought. Oh, I guess I used the rest of it for iron 3 chloride. That kind of makes sense. Wait a second, no way. Silicon tetrachloride here, we have 18, right? It's 1 to 1 with SISG, silicon solar grade dust. And we need 32 of this to go through the blast furnace to give us our silicon bull. This thing we cut down into wafers, and this is what we need to create the ultra low power ICs. So we need so much chlorine for this. Oh my goodness, this is so much more expensive than the first time. Or than the last version of this pack. GTNH developers, please. <laughs> wow, this is crazy. I might have to go mining again for rock salt. Any chance we have some extra? I don't think so, right? Maybe we have some in ore form or something? Oh, saved. Saved. Look at this. We've got quite a bit of rock salt here. Oh yeah, 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 we've got loads here. Yeah, silicon is super, super cheap. Look at this. Okay, yeah, and finally, <laughs> look at this quest right here. Salty from all the silicon. <laughs> yes, I am. I'm extremely salty from all this. Yeah, to cook the silicon bull, we also need a small gallium arsenide crystal made from gallium and arsenic. We should have some of that left over, right? Yeah. Yeah, and these two dusts just go through the blast furnace. Right? Yes. Oh, there is actually something I was missing here. We do get a good portion of the salt back, which I guess can be turned into chlorine if we electrolyze. Okay, it's not quite as expensive as I first thought here. Still. 450 seconds.
And after doing some cooking, we should have our monocrystalline silicon bull. And the quest. And actually, the quest reward gives us a free 32 SISG dust. Or do we want the small gallium arsenide crystal? No, 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 we'll take this SISG. And we'll just instantly make another one here, since we can. Now all we have to do is throw it through the cutting machine. Grab the four cells of lubricant. Actually, it's eight cells of lubricant. We don't have enough here. Uh, maybe we should just take it out of the cutting machine here. Yeah, I'll replace that later. Also, we get the wafers. Quest for lubricant. And apparently it wants us to make an advanced cutting machine. I guess we make one for the quest. We have the circuit spare. Although we are going to need this because, you know, what I realized when, I, when the EBF was crafting, we're also going to need a way to power that thing. Which means I think we need to make four advanced combustion generators. That's going to be expensive for us. All right, there you go. The advanced cutting machine. To make the ULP ICs, ultra low power ICs. Oh, maybe this is the MV cutting machine. Yeah, we need to cut these down after. But first, we need to make use of the laser engraver, which we preemptively crafted last episode. It's this machine right here. Uh, yeah, Greg Tech. Uh, I think we can use exquisite any green gem. Hopefully this works. It doesn't work. We actually have one more rabbit hole to jump down. Actually, you know what? I got it wrong again. I was just... <laughs> I almost missed this, actually. I was almost in the Twilight Forest there hunting for exquisite gems. But actually, there is another way. If we're able to craft an MV lathe, which needs a flawless diamond, we do have an exquisite here, which we can use in the Forge Hammer. Yeah, we trade it in for two flawless diamonds, and we can craft an MV lathe. Oh man, this is eating into our circuits here. And one more machine for the collection. We have some earth shards here, which we should be able to compress. This gives us the block, which we can put in the cutting machine. You know, learning to read NEI is, is really a skill in this game. There is so many pointless recipes in GTNH. And some things that'll catch you off guard if you're not careful. Like these lenses right here. From this we get the plates. And the plates we can lathe. Yeah, this is a pretty complex dance of resources that we have here in, in the mid-MV chapter. But the chemistry has not even begun yet. Just wait. <laughs> Just wait until we get into IV. All of this mess down here? Yeah. Then we really get into some materials we can't even pronounce. Okay, we got the Terra lens. Now we can use the laser engraver, one of my favourite machines in GregTech, and the wafer. Look at this thing, this is glorious. And now we have four ULP ICs, which we can put through the brand new MV cutting machine. <laughs> my goodness, this is so many processing steps here. And all of this needs to be fully automated at some point in the game. Quest for the ultra low power IC. And finally, one rabbit hole we've climbed out of. Four MV energy hatches. Now this is an achievement. Now we can cook the canthal. All right, and we are back multiple hours later here. Look at all of this redstone, ruby, and cinnabar. Excellent. So yeah, we have quite a bit to catch up on here. First of all, the miner did finish on Spessartine. I moved it over to the redstone vein, as you saw, since we need more chrome. Yeah, let's first of all get all of this processing. It's mostly the ruby we're after right now anyway. Although the, the extra redstone is nice since we're also centrifuging it. So regarding our goals here, I'm not so sure about the HV circuits, we'll see. But the Canthal, on the other hand... Yeah, we're up to just under three stacks smelted already through the Blast Furnace. Make sure that the oxygen supplies are okay here. And you definitely want to make sure that you actually use oxygen. You have the option to use without if you use Circuit 1. But not only does that increase the amount of time it takes to smelt, it also, of course, increases the total EU cost, since the furnace is on for longer per ingot. And again, our diesel is not exactly the most robust system. It looks like we still have a bit here, and we also have our batteries, MV lithium batteries. It's set up in exactly the same way the LV one was set up, only this time we have our NV MV energy hatches, MV combustion generators, and annealed copper cable. As you can see though, this comes out as hot canthal, 
and we need regular cancel, so we basically need to cool down the ingots. And to do that, we either need a vacuum freezer, which is a multi-block structure, this is a lot of aluminium. But the only problem with this is it takes HV pumps and EV circuits, which is not something we've made yet, at least not for another couple episodes, so the second way to do it is through IC2 coolant. IC2 coolant is just lapis dust and water in a mixer. You can technically save on lapis dust if you use distilled water, and in fact I was using distilled water, we are in fact still distilling water in this distillery, but the problem with this is it's just way too slow, and the reason it's here is because we have a water source from this bronze pipe. Yeah, this method was just way too slow for us right now. So I decided to implement another water pipe here, and the reason it's in this mixer and not the one at LV is because this recipe is MV for the IC2 coolant. <laughs> so there's a lot of temporary workarounds at this point in the game. This goes up to another water tank that's above. Just temporary for the time being. I can't wait to get rid of these things. Oh nice, and it's a blood moon. I was wondering why it got dark so quickly. And you know, actually I just remembered, we have this exposed area next to our kitchen. I dug this tunnel, I don't think it's going to stay, I'm probably going to end up covering this up. But we definitely need to make sure that is secure. I believe the rest of the base should be safe from mobs though. So yeah, we almost have the cancel for the coils for the blast furnace. The other project we had on the go was stainless steel of course. It's 6 stacks of iron, 1 stack of manganese, 1 stack of nickel and 1 stack of chrome. The manganese of course we got from Spiss Artine. And we should actually have some extra in this electrolyzer, I think it's maybe just full on oxygen. And oxygen I definitely do not want to void since we use so much of it in the blast furnace. Trust me, do not void any extra fluids. <laughs> You're gonna thank yourself later on. It's much better just to craft the extra tank. Even though it is quite expensive in this pack. Yeah, I think once we take the oxygen out of this, it's gonna start to electrolyze more of the Spissartine. And we can also get it from Pyrolucite, which is also something that comes from Spissartine veins. And I've actually been ore washing it since we get a chance at Chrome. Yeah, this Pyrolucite is mixed in with Spissartine, but I really wanna send it through a thermal centrifuge actually for Tantalite. Tantalite we can electrolyze into Tantalum dust. And Tantalum, I think we need the rods. Hold on, I'm gonna find this. I think it may be the bolts. Yes, this is it right here. We need tantalum bolts to make basic capacitors from Ender IO. So I definitely want to save this. We don't want to use this up. And I know that we're going through a lot of new materials here. <laughs> For those of you who do not play Greg Tech, it's probably very overwhelming right now. Yeah, we're going to be getting into, into some fun projects once we hit HV. But we really need some more advanced technology, which is the reason I'm pushing so hard for to unlock this next tier. We are deliberately rushing at this point, which I think is the right strategy. It means we can get into things like Thomcraft earlier. But again, this is a very long pack, so uh, yeah, there there has to be episodes like this where we just craft. Alright, so we made it through the Blood Moon. We got two stacks of Hot Candle on us. And notice that we're actually not taking any damage. Normally this would burn us, but I think because of our super duper amazing backpack, it gives us permanent fire resistance and therefore we don't take any damage from holding these things. I do want to make sure we get the quest for IC2 coolant. And now all we have to do is throw this through the chemical bath. Oh boy, of course it's 60 seconds pairing it again. And I believe this also gives us a byproduct of hot coolant, which we should be able to recycle once we get our vacuum freezer back into regular coolant. And this regular coolant is actually used later in the game for other things. <laughs> Prime example right there, the UIV circuit, look at that. Polybenzimidazole, I remember this. Anyways, in the meantime, we have some other projects to work on today. And I think this might end up being quite a long episode. So we are kind of jumping all over the place, but we're waiting on the mixer to be free for it to mix stainless steel. That's currently doing IC2 coolant, and the cancel of course we're cooling down, so let's move on to the HV circuits. So we're going to have to break this down into smaller parts, and for this we need a lot of polyethylene, and that of course means a lot of oil. Oh, we're not going to make it. <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. And you guys actually had some great suggestions on this oil, but the thing is once we hit HV we're going to move away to a more renewable source of power. Okay, check the energy levels. Actually, this thing uses like peanuts for power. Look at this. The batteries are almost full. We are going to chain some of these tanks together. So we want a low voltage tank and then a pump, which will automatically send the oil into the next tank. One more pump and one more tank. So we effectively have three tanks stacked on top of each other. And whenever we return in the next hour or so, we should have quite a lot of oil waiting for us. In the meantime, we have some more exploration to do. Once again, inside the Twilight Forest, I didn't nail the landing. So similar to the ULP ICs, the Ultra Low Power ICs, we also need integrated logic and random access memory. And these things are just different lenses inside the laser engraver, they give us different outputs from the wafer. We do have the ruby lens already, that's just an exquisite ruby, we've been getting a lot of those from our sifter. And for the random access memory, we either need whatever this thing is, whatever these two things are, which only come from tier 4 planets. 
or a green sapphire. Green sapphire we can find here in the twilight forest. I believe we should have found one already. Aha, there is a sapphire vein, yeah. And these lenses are totally reusable, so this is only a one-time collection process. Although there is a surprising lack of green sapphire in this vein. I think it may have just spawned too high up in the world, and the surface is like right here. Yeah, it's all of this pie rope, which is not something we need right now. Alright, now that we're back, we want to get all this green sapphire through the ore washers and then through the sifting machine. And ideally we get an exquisite, but we can also settle for the regular gems and we can just use the lathe method that we used previously. You know, that really didn't take too long at all. We got the green sapphire lens here through the lathe. First of all, we want the integrated logic from Ruby. I think we'll do two of each. Those need to be cut down and ready for the circuit production. Everything is going really well here. Our canthal is almost finished. The rest of the ruby is almost finished processing. We have almost a stack of chrome. I want to do this in full stacks. There is also circuit boards, which I started already in the chemical reactor. And it has to be recursively crafted, so we need to make the LVs to make the MVs to make the HVs. I've also been making up a ton of cupra nickel here, which we need for the coils. And this chemical reactor for the good circuit boards is almost out of gold foil, and foil is just through the bending machine twice. Let's maybe do half a stack, because it gives us four at once. Nice, much more ruby here from the redstone centrifuge. It looks like we, we were out of power here before. I think just everything running at once, the steam system can't really keep up. So yeah, now it's just a matter of putting everything together. So I realised that we had to move the blast furnace one more time, only this time, instead of using the cooper nickel coils like we did before, we should be able to use our canthal, and yeah, look at this, I realised it was over a chunk boundary. It wasn't really the most ideal place for the blast furnace anyway. Here we can actually have two of them, and I know what you guys are already commenting. I can hear the keyboard right now. <laughs> Three, please wall shear, please wall shear. So the thing about wall shearing right now, especially when you have double energy hatches, is that it's not exactly the easiest thing to pull off. And besides, in this specific case, it would only really save us a few heatproof machine casings, which is just some invar. Similar to the other blast furnaces we have outside, we could, for example, do something like this. Put the next controller here, facing the right way, of course. And then share the walls on the coils. And that's definitely something we'll make use of so that we can cut down on the amount of coils we need. But we already have a full 16, uh, that's only 15. The 16th one should craft with the 2x canthal wire, mica foil, and molten cooper nickel. I made enough Molten Cooper Nickel, I think, for two sets of coils. And this should be our quest. This is exciting. There we have it. Canthal Coil Blocks. Oh yeah. Now this unlocks a whole slew of different recipes for us. And I also think it's an upgrade visually. I think I prefer these over the Cooper Nickel versions. We also just managed to get enough chrome there. Let's start mixing up this stainless steel. I think this is actually going to give us enough for nine stacks, right? Gives us nine at a time. Oh yeah, and one more thing about the blast furnace is, at least in this version of GregTech, you can only put input buses or input hatches on the bottom layer. This space up here is reserved for muffler hatches and heat proofs. But yeah, speaking of things taking forever, the circuits. So yeah, uh, as you can see here, I did gather the materials for quite a lot of the circuits, that actually. There is one catch though, and that is that we need more diodes, and these can only be bought every 40 minutes. And I've kind of been forgetting about this, actually. So it means that we don't really have enough to pull this off today. Actually, maybe, we are close. But the other thing we need, for, at least for HV circuits, is transistors. And this is made from SISG ingots, which are cooked in the blast furnace and do have to be cooled since we get the hot ingot. And the blast furnace recipe requires the canthal coils. So yeah, I'm not really sure what we should prioritize, either that or the, the stainless steel. I guess we can technically cook both at once though, right? Or no, stainless steel does require canthal. Yeah, I was going to say we can use these coils here. So I think in light of that news, we are going to wrap up the episode right here. There's not really a whole lot else we can accomplish today. But my goodness, I spent like three hours trying to prepare for these circuits, so... <laughs> Things should go sm... Oh, I've lost a... There it is. 
things should go smoothly at the start of next episode, I'm hoping. Oh yeah, and I did actually end up crafting this thermal centrifuge for pyrolucite, for tantalite, for tantalum, and then I realized that it needs the cantho coils to actually cook it, so that's actually a third thing we have to put through the blast furnace. All the more reason why we need two of these things by now. Oh, of course I misplaced them. Oh yeah, and we're missing the energy hatches for this one too. We should have those somewhere. We do. And while I was crafting the blast furnaces, I did also make some extra input hatches, input buses, and output buses. Since these things are universal between every single Greg Tech multi block, so it's not like those are going to go to waste. Oh, yeah, and I suppose we'll need some more generators for these, which means we need more circuits, and that's not something we really have spare right now. So, yeah, I need to keep buying these transistors and diodes for the circuits for next episode. Still haven't exactly decided what we're doing out here. Some of you guys, uh, agreed with me and that this building is horrible and I still think that is the case. I'm, <laughs> I'm really not loving the way this is looking. So I'm pretty set on us tearing this down. And we are going to fix this area over time. I just don't think we're going to prioritize this. And this will eventually all be cleaned up as well. So yeah, we did manage to get the Canthal EBF coils. Unfortunately, no HV circuits, but we're so, so close to begin being able to get them. And stainless steel, you know what? I really do want to get this quest today. So let's actually just cook up a batch of stainless steel. Are you prepared for HV? Almost. And this also takes oxygen, correct? Yeah, it does. All oh, right, it has problems. Yeah, we need to do maintenance because we broke it. And 60 seconds later, we should get the first stainless steel. Quest calls for 64, so we're not gonna get that today, but we can complete our own quest here. We, we almost made it, but again, we got a bit too ambitious today. <laughs> Anyways, that is gonna wrap us up for today. I appreciate if you watched all the way to the end of this video. Thank you guys once again for watching and I'll see you all in the next episode of Greg Tech New Horizons.